Hey, welcome everyone. We're live and we are going to talk about the fastest way to grow and scale your business. I've got Roland Frazier with me today. Stay right with me. We'll be right back. This is the Not Your Average Joe Show, where each week we bring you sales, marketing, and mindset strategies you need to get to your next level. And now, here's your host, international business mentor, Joe Soto. Roland Frazier, welcome to the show. Hey, hey, Joe. Thanks for having me. Hey, I'm, I'm excited to have you here. I know um, for people who may not know who you are, um, I'll, I'll just do a quick intro. Roland is uh, the founder of uh, five different Inc. fastest growing companies. He's built or sold 24 different companies between the, uh, tell me if I'm wrong here, between $3 million and almost $4 billion. And he has an incredible philosophy and methodology and strategy around growing and scaling businesses that he's going to share with us today. Did I hit that right? You got it. Absolutely. All right, man. You're also the uh, one of the key principles behind what well, you you own uh, Scalable and you're one of the key principles behind digitalmarketer.com. Correct. Uh, Traffic and Conversion Summit, which people who will be listening here, we have primarily uh, marketing agency owners, digital marketing consultants, and a variety of entrepreneurs will be joining us on this uh, show live and watching afterwards, uh, Roland. And and also the War Room Mastermind, which I had an opportunity to be at just a few short weeks ago down in yeah. the great state awesome. of Texas. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, where it's semi-open for people to, to get together and, and collaborate. That was awesome. And uh, I certainly learned a lot. I took a whole like planner full of notes from that. So let's let's just jump right into it, can we? Talk, let's talk about what you believe to be the fastest way to scale a business. And knowing that the the audience that I just described to you is on here listening and some will be answer, ask some questions and we'll tend to hear later on. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that, I mean, there's lots of ways to grow businesses, but if you wanted to have twice as many customers, twice as many sales, uh, as you do currently, there's no faster way to grow than to acquire another business. I just think uh, acquisition for growth, nothing can compete with that. And so you got people on the line here who are assessing the current business climate. We've got uh, myself, I, I always say that I'm one of the only 10 year olds that you wanna work on your marketing strategy because I've had a, a marketing agency for over 10 years, which is why <laughs> I found what you do so fascinating and appealing and uh, my wife and I are going to be going through your challenge. I'm going to be going through it for a second time. This time I want to include her awesome. um, so I can bring her on board because um, we're both entrepreneurs, as you know. And I I want to uh, answer a few of the questions that I know I had that I know people who are watching and listening because some people will be listening to this down the road on uh, you know on the podcast channels. Yeah. Is um, businesses are tanking right now. There's a lot of businesses that are hurting and this is acquisition is actually a way to help a lot of these businesses. Can you explain a little bit more about what you mean by that? It really is. Yeah, I I, I believe in win win. I always have, and um, I think that that if people think sometimes people think of uh, acquisitions as predatory, like the you know the old corporate raiding things that you heard about in the '80s and hostile takeovers and things like that, or somebody's down on their luck, and so you're going to take advantage of them and you know and steal their business, and that's not really it at all that a lot of people don't realize that even before we had any crisis, there were about 575,000 businesses a year in the United States alone that simply closed their doors every year. There's, you know, lots of reasons. It could be yeah. challenges with partners, you know, it could be health, it could be uh, death in the family, it could be, you know, wanting to relocate a non, you know, transferable business, divorce, you know, partner challenge, all kinds of things that cause people to just say, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I don't have any idea how to sell it. I don't even know if anybody would ever buy it. They don't even think about selling it. They're just like, hey, I guess I can't do this anymore. So they shut the doors. And that's really a shame because those businesses have momentum. They yeah. have a brand. They've got customers. They've got, they've got sales and profits. They've got all their supply and uh, distribution systems. They've got, you know, all the things that, that, being in business creates and um, and they just go away. And so I believe that there's an opportunity for us in any environment 
to go in and take over that business. It, anything that the seller gets is found money and the employees don't lose their jobs. The customers don't lose the reliable source for providing the product or service that they were buying. So everybody wins and you pick up a business that has momentum that you can either bolt on to the one that you've already got, or if you don't have one at all, it gives you such a head start to leapfrog yeah. all over the challenges of starting something up. So I just, I, I mean, I can't tell you how excited I am about that as an opportunity. Now, layer over that, everything that's happened recently in the economy and you know in our current environment and yeah. the number of businesses that are closing is even greater. But the reasons are similar to all the ones that were closing before. It's just that there's a lot more pressure on businesses right now. So a lot of times when we're taking over a business, we're actually doing it in a way that helps the person who is the current owner transition out of that to whatever else they want to do in a way that gets them something for what they've built over that time and then keeps the jobs that exist, helps the economy keep going and keeps the customers happy. Brilliant. And I, I love this strategy. And I know that one of the st stopping points though for people to go, well, I can't entertain this because they're talking about buying up businesses. And I Maybe these are some of the, some of the people watching or listening are newer entrepreneurs. Maybe they're just getting their own uh, business going themselves. Or, mm -hmm. and really, I know this works for anyone. But what do you say to somebody who says, I, "I'm kind of new, Roland. I don't have. I'm not flush in the bank where I can just go up and buy a bunch of businesses right now." How, how does this pertain to me? Yeah, the reason that I like to say acquire instead of buy is that um, I I don't really buy many businesses at all. Although I acquire lots of businesses and. Um, the difference is important because it, it particularly in those situations that I mentioned, and you know, there's millions of these things that are available at any given time. We figure there's about 3.6 million businesses that are available worldwide to acquire using these strategies. And these strategies that I like to use is to acquire with no money out of pocket. And I don't say no money down because typically there's money in the business, there's assets, that the business has that can provide you with the ability for it to pay for itself. The owner can finance the acquisition because remember, this is usually found money to them. Um, you can do things like earnouts where they get paid at the, you know, based on the performance of the business in the future. There's a lot of ways to acquire businesses that don't require anything from you. I've got 216 of them uh, that I have come up with so far. And so I just kind of go down whenever I've got something to acquire. I just go down that list and say, you know, what are these things are going to apply here that I can use to make this happen? And usually I don't, there's really about 20 of those that, you know, that kind of cover every situation. And all the other stuff is just, you know, different create, creative deals that have, you know, been structured over time when there's some particular thing that a seller needs or has a challenge with. So yeah, it's, it's really um, surprisingly easy to acquire businesses without having to come out of pocket yourself and without having any personal liability or having to use your personal credit. Yeah. And that's, this is a big deal because there's a lot of people here who will be stuck on the fact and they want to get them off of this. Um, and it's something that I know we're going to talk about and how you get them off of this with this mindset of, no, you can actually do it with little to actually in many cases, no money. And I, I met uh, Adam Ly Lyons at your, at your war room event. Oh, nice. And he gave a great example of buying up that game store mm -hmm. that his child was so, uh, kind of addicted to going and frequently uh, frequenting and and uh, he found out they were closing their doors and he went in and found a way to not just acquire the business but to acquire the building right yeah and he said not only did i acquire the building and the business and take over and put the the previous owner in a better situation than he was going to leave on his own right without having to come out of his own pocket um he said uh you know, he's able to also do something for his kid and also to do something that can generate money for, for him on a, on a long-term basis. It was brilliant. And he walked us through a little bit of that strategy and it's eye opening because I know, you know, as somebody who's been an entrepreneur for now close to 20 years, um, this has not been on my radar, Roland. Mm -hmm. So up until May, up until your, your, your challenge you did back in May, this was not really on my radar because I had limiting beliefs around 
who am I to buy a, acquire a business? I love the reframe that it's acquire, not nest, not buy. Right. And and uh, and you've got several in your portfolio, and more importantly, you've helped how many people do this? Um, we are pushing through the challenge now. We're about six thousand people that we've uh, that we've helped do this. It's <laughs> it's really really cool, and I get messages all the time now from people on Facebook and Instagram and uh, 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 LinkedIn saying, you know, ah, I bought my first business or I bought this business and we've done this. It's just yeah. really, really cool. Now, so here's, I'm not, I won't gonna give away very much because I know you've got another challenge coming up for everyone that everyone here, they can participate in it and they sure. should. I don't know one entrepreneur that should not be a part of your upcoming challenge. And we'll talk about that in a moment. And I've yeah. got something incredible for people who do participate with you and um, I would, you know, not pass pass up this opportunity. But here's what I want to ask: You talk about in the challenge that it's not just businesses and companies that you think of as, you know, on the streets or online, even e-commerce stores, but it's also entities and assets that are online, like Facebook groups. Yeah, can people really buy Facebook groups or acquire? Not buy, acquire Facebook groups and, uh, yeah. and other things like this online, other assets. Yes, and um, and so technically, uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and and uh, the investors in Facebook own the groups, but control is what we're after. And so you can acquire control of LinkedIn groups, Facebook groups, and all sorts of other media. The way I like to look at it is, I, I have a um, a wheel that I like to go around and say, you know, there are a few different things that you might want to think about when you're growing your business, and um, the main ones are. How do I get more leads? Well, you get leads by acquiring media. Now you can acquire media by owning it or renting it. So it's a lot like real estate. I prefer to own than to rent. So you can either pay Facebook or LinkedIn or you know Instagram or other people for access to the lists that they've already built, or you can actually control those things yourself. So if you control a group on Facebook or a meetup group, you know, physically or a LinkedIn group or a page or an, a YouTube account, a channel, any of those things, that's media that someone has already taken the time and effort to put out the content and take the time to grow one of those things to have a significant pre uh, presence. And so what we look for is we say, who's already aggregated the attention and the eyeballs of your ideal customer profile. And then we go acquire those groups or those assets, those media assets. And then we have as many leads as we want. And yeah. that's, you know, you're, that's you're a buying a built in change. audience. Exactly. Exactly. So, or you're acquiring. I got to change my language because this yes. is, this is insightful. So a question for you, uh, um, with, around, around buying the controlled media is because no one ever thinks that they can acquire, um, they think about acquiring traffic. They don't think of acquiring assets to be the fastest path to traffic. Right. And it's not just the fastest path to traffic. It's the fastest path to getting traffic back to your business then when you redirect some of it to grow your own business. And so this is where it's fascinating. And here's the other thing. So people go in. Why, so why would anybody entertain the idea of allowing you to acquire their Facebook group or their LinkedIn profile? Yeah, it, it's really interesting. And as you start talking to people who have built those things up, it's kind of like people, you know, you, you have a podcast, right? Is it is it really easy doing this, getting, finding the guests and, and keeping this thing going and producing it, you know, day after, day after week after week, right? Most podcasts die relatively quickly. Very few people find that they've got the energy and the time to do this on a long-term basis. And the same thing is true when they start a Facebook group or LinkedIn group or a page or, or a YouTube channel. They start putting out the content and people start coming and it's cool, but they either get tired, they get burnt out, they lose the, you know, the desire to do it. And a lot of them don't know how to monetize either. So they're doing this. What they find is they've created themselves a $0 per hour job. Yeah, that, you know, it's like it feels good to have all those people in the comments and the likes and everything. But eventually it's like, man, we got to make some money. I got to go do this other thing. And now I'm still stuck because I feel a little guilty leaving my, you know, my crew behind, uh, you know, my assets that I've built here and my followers and everything. 
but I got, I just don't know what to do. And so you're really helping a lot of those people because they have found themselves in a zero dollar per hour job that they created for themselves. So oh, man, it's brilliant. You, come in, you come in and you say, Hey, I can help you either stay there and turn this into something that makes you some significant money because I have other things to sell besides, you know, most of those guys monetize through ads or t-shirts. That'll only take you so far. Right. Um, so I'll come in and I'll add all of these other things that my business has because your customer is absolutely aligned with the thing that I have to offer. And therefore you're able to go in and say, I can give you some money for that or I can, I want you to stay. What I'm going to do is I just, I want to own it but I want you to stay and keep doing what you're doing. And instead of the, how much did you make last year? And I mean, very often it's under $5,000. It's right. no money on the, on these type of assets right. we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, how much have you made off of this in the last year? You know, $1,500, 1,000, 5,000. Um, well, how about, you know, I've got to pay somebody to create content for me. How about if I just give you, you know, two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 a month? to do that. Now you're not coming out of pocket to do that because you're giving them the money that comes from what you're able to do to monetize the audience. So that's, again, the business is paying for itself. The brilliant. asset is paying for itself. Yeah. I, this is brilliant. And I know there's going to be people who are, there's people getting on here late and people are on here now from LinkedIn and Facebook and YouTube who are joining us uh, live rolling and people will be listening to this after the fact. Uh, this is really important. So you talked about people get burnt out People uh, don't know how to monetize. This is why, you know, I'm, I've had a digital marketing agency since 2010. Um, and when I um, showed up and, and was invited by Ty Lopez to be his, his lead trainer for his SMMA program, which ended up doing over $40 million in sales. Right. The reason why is that it created a portal for new entrepreneurs to come in and learn how to go help these small businesses. This is next level. This is, yeah, if you know how to do this stuff, why not grow it and, and, and see a bigger picture here of being able to go in and use your talents and your skills, your digital marketing, your marketing skills, whatever your particular specialty is, and apply that to the business that's suffering and hurting and burned out or not being able to monetize. And this, I wish I knew this a couple of years back because I had a gentleman who had a Facebook group of over 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, um, are you monetizing it? He said, no. And I consulted him on how to monetize it, just gave him the knowledge to monetize it. So right. he could kind of turn his life around. I've seen other people and I've coached other people who have done that. This is a different thing. This is, you could go in and say, listen, this is a pain in the butt, isn't it? And they're like, yeah, it's a pain in the butt because 20,000 members, guess what? Who has to moderate that? Right. Whoever controls that. And that's, you're showing a much different way to approach these types of businesses from a consulting perspective for the digital consultants on the on the line right now who go wait a minute before i go in and pitch services to help with marketing why not look at the possibility of control and acquisition and really relieve the pressures these entrepreneurs feel who want maybe they have a different dream or who knows what they want to do or like you said they just would love to get paid something because right. they need it right now so yeah. this, is, this is incredible and, and I see a couple of people on here I knew already have been in your challenge, like Brett, so he can speak to this. Let's talk real quick about what you've got coming up because it's coming up in two days. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So you call it the Epic Challenge. Let's start with that. And what, and I love the name Epic. And what does Epic stand for in your world? Epic stands for what we talked about at the very beginning is, is you know, we want this to be an ethical win-win thing. So Epic is ethical profits in crisis. We have a crisis that's going on right now, but but that's a there's crises going on all the time. There happens to be a pandemic while we're recording this, right? But there's always a crisis in an entrepreneur's life. And so there are plenty of opportunities to come in and ethically help those people out while they're having those crises in a way that is win for them, win for their customers, win for their employees, and a win for you. That's what it's all about. So um, I, I have a challenge that I put together. We go over five days and um, talk about how, what is this opportunity? What does it look like? How do you identify the kinds of businesses to buy? We only talked about one of seven categories right now. We said, right. you know, if you need leads, you can do this, but think about what you need for your business. Maybe you need infrastructure. People are always telling me they have a hard time finding people. You can acquire 
people. It's called aqua hire, right? There's an actual name for that where you can acquire a sales team or a distribution team or a software development team. You might want to uh, have more products to sell because you're thinking about how can I increase my LCV, my lifetime customer value? Yeah. Well, one of the easiest ways is to have additional customers. You might say, well, I would like to make a greater margin, a, a larger amount of profit. So how can I do that? Um, well, that that's easy by acquiring up and down your supply and distribution chain. Even if your distribution chain is affiliates, right? It applies to e-commerce, to consulting, to you know maybe the, your supplier is a content provider or an outsourced service or something like that. Or maybe you're thinking, how can I innovate and adapt to new situations? Well, you can acquire other people's intellectual property, their copyrights, brands, logos, lists, you know, software programs. Or how can I increase my capital? How can I get more money to work with? Well, there's ways to do that as well. So those seven ways we cover during that five day challenge, we say, here's the opportunity. That's day one, day two, and three, day three, or how do you find these things? Day four is how do I analyze them and, and give get specific scripts of what to say when I find these people and contact them directly to talk about acquiring their business. And then day five is the deal stack, which is how do you acquire these things for $0 out of pocket? That's what we cover during those five days. Which is a complete masterclass on everything you're talking about. And you you would normally sell this for how much? Yeah, we normally sell, sell this for $2,000. It's it's just, it's a full course. If you think about- I know, know I've been yeah. through it. It's an, it <laughs> is a full course. It is full workbooks, everyone, and yep. templates and worksheets. He gives you the scripts to reach out to business owners in a soft, gentle, uh, conversational way to get the conversation started. So you never feel like uh, you're having to do anything that's, uh, you know, that you would uh, feel icky about. So yeah. wh what are you charging for the challenge for the five days? We're charging uh, 55 big American dollars. For okay. This. So why only $55? Really, it's because I want to get people, I want to share this information with people and I want to get it out there in their hands. And we actually talked about doing it as a free challenge. Um, but what we have, our, our experience is that some small investment by people really causes them to take things more seriously. It causes them to show up. It we'll causes up. them to do the homework and actually get the benefit that we want them to get. Here's what I loved about your challenge when I went through it in May, Roland, is that you give people things to do like homework. Yeah. And then you reward people with some, I'm not going to talk about the cool prizes, but you reward people who actually follow through and share in the group and the community you built in that first challenge I went through with you is amazing. So it's $55. That's the best $55 you could spend to close out 2020 going into the new year with momentum, in my opinion. But I'm going to actually do something really cool. And it's because I love you and I love your program. And what you've already done for me in shifting my mindset, my paradigms around business, the wheels I have on in motion to be not just maybe one of your best partners in this in, in promoting the challenge, but also uh, one of your success stories, which is one of my goals, is um, with acquisition. I'm talking about is mm -hmm. I'm gonna I have a new program that uh, I started to create at the end of last year when the pandemic hit shifted what I was going to teach in the program. So I put it on halt and it's called growth hacker blueprint. It's all about growth hacking. Mm -hmm. And this is an element of growth hacking. I mean, what you essentially do is go in and hack growth and say, Hey, let's identify a business that is ripe and, and uh, makes sense for me to acquire because based on your background, experience, skill sets, other companies, could you plug and play and, and help uh, turn that company profitable and, or, you know, uh, put it in position to be able to resell later. And uh, that's growth hacking. And you have the ultimate growth hack, which is growth through acquisition. And so I have a program that is called Growth Hacker Blueprint. It's a 997 program. It's going to go for sale for 997 at the beginning of the year. Anyone who signs up for your challenge, and this is, by the way, over 40 lessons. So this is like a real in-depth. I talk about traffic. I talk about conversion. I talk about retention and I go through all those pieces. I give them everything from how would you look at a business and being able to decipher and decode what it is you could go in and help with to and really train people up as growth hacker consultants, but it's also for entrepreneurs who want to growth hack their own business. And this fits in perfectly because it's the ultimate uh, compliment 
um, and supplement. And it's really just to incentivize people to take this seriously and to get in, get in your challenge. So it's like an ethical bribe, okay? That's but super it's, cool. It's That's called really uh, Growth Hacker Blueprint. You'll get, as soon as I, and I get notification a few times a week that you have decided to participate in Roland's Challenge, which is coming up in two days. It starts yeah. the 10th, right? It starts uh, on Thursday, which is the 10th. Yeah, you're right. The 10th. Yes. So it's Thursday. Yeah. It yes. goes for five days in a row, or do you have a weekend break? It, it actually, so it goes, um, we call it a five day challenge, but we do a couple of bonus days, so which we don't, you know, we normally announce then, but I'll just tell everybody. So basically, um, Thursday and Friday, are the first two days of content. Saturday, we do a Q&A. So that's an extra day that we just answer questions about what people have questions about from the first two days, because this is new to a lot of people. And you know, I want to take the time to really be sure people understand that. That's done live uh, so that people can actually interactively ask questions and get answers. Then Sunday is off. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of the following week, we do the other three days of content. And then on Thursday, I do a bonus day and the bonus day on Thursday is answering a hypothetical that I give them of here's a business that is based on a deal that we did and show me using everything that you've learned how you would buy this business. You would do it for no money out of pocket and you would put money in your pocket. So not only would you acquire ownership of the business and not only would you not come out of pocket or use your personal credit to do it, but also how are you going to put money in your pocket so you've got some cash up front? And so that bonus day, we go over that. And so it's really fun to see all the different things that people do on Wednesday evening to create the acquisition, the, what we call the deal stack funding for this business. And um, and then I show them how I would do it. And uh, that's on Thursday. So it's uh, that's kind of how it goes. And it's uh, it's it's pretty fun. And that day alone is probably worth two thousand dollars. <laughs> what, what do you what would you if I wanted to steal you for an hour for personal coaching or consulting? What do you what's your fee? I yeah, mean, you don't um, even offer this. I know that. I, I only do um, consulting. I do a four hour thing. Um, I don't do more and I don't do less. It's twenty five thousand dollars. So, yeah. so $25,000 <laughs> for four hours or a five day challenge with two bonus days with Q and a where you can go in there and ask questions and get answers. And I know you have a small uh, upsell where people can get like a VIP access to you and, yeah. and be able to get even more. And it's inexpensive for that. Even I think it's like yeah. another hundred bucks or something. $97. Like you're right. So I, um, I can't wait for the challenge and I'm so excited for people who are on here who got a chance to watch this and see this live. And I'm going to make sure a lot of people see this between now and Thursday. If you're listening to this after the fact, the chances are high that Roland will be doing another challenge and he will do these, but he's not doing them uh, very frequently. So you don't yeah. want to miss it. You don't want to wait because waiting, even if you did this in six months, Roland, that's six months of a significant additional revenue stream you could be losing for your business. And that's what people to grab onto is that you heard him say, Little to no money and often mo no money out of pocket. And also, wait, don't even have to check your, don't even have to use your credit credit and your credit score. That's incredible. Yeah. That solves a lot of people's mental blocks to what's possible. And that's what you've done here is open up people's minds to what's possible. And I love it. Yeah. And let me, let me say um, two things about that too. One is that this is, you know, they, you hear everyone saying we're living in unprecedented times. We are. And the chaos and the, uh, the fear of the unknown of what's going to come of everything that's going on right now creates an, a unique opportunity that I haven't seen in my lifetime. So the sooner you have the opportunity to come in and be aware of what you can do in this current environment, there are in all changing times, huge fortunes made. And so you have the opportunity now to get yourself set and to also make yourself change ready for anything else because you can do this from anywhere in the world. It works in all countries. There's no specific United States or other country thing that you have to depend on. You Beautiful. can take this as a portable skill to do anywhere on the planet. That's amazing. The second thing I want to say is I'm doing this right now. We bought two, we acquired two software companies in the last 30 days and yesterday I closed a deal on acquiring 10% of a $50 million company that is netting $10 million in profit every wow. year. And I did that for no money out of pocket with no credit, 
none of that. So it's very exciting to take advantage of all of the opportunity that exists right now while benefiting everyone. That's the thing, right? It's truly win-win. So I, 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 I want people to also judge this on there's, there's, you're hearing some inspiration from Roland of what's possible. And, and also what's, what's real is that he's in the trenches doing it during the, the two biggest holidays of the year, at least in the U.S. typically, which is Thanksgiving and Christmas. He said he did it twice in the last 30 days during a pandemic to boot and during a not a nutty election to boot. Right. Yeah. You did all this. Right. You're swimming around all that stuff and still making it happen. I, I um, Ty Lopez, as you know, has been buying up distressed brands that have already kind of closed. Took the challenge. He was in the challenge. It was yeah, fun. he was in the challenge. Yeah. He um just got Radio Shack as his last one. Yep. But I want people to understand you don't have to be Ty. And by the way, Ty Lopez didn't didn't pay out of his pocket six million dollars to buy a Radio Shack. That's the deal. But that doesn't mean that came out of his pocket. But that's beside the point. What's the point is that there are uh, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of small to medium sized businesses right now that need the same type of help before their doors close that you could come in and 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 rescue and or acquire um, very quickly. And that's what this is about. And I love so to help. And it works for people at all different levels. I don't want people to think that they have to go out and identify a business that's netting ten thousand dollars in profit. That's not how it works, but that is a possible opportunity. It is, yeah, absolutely. You, you, get those are the out there. They are absolutely. There are hundreds of thousands of them that are closing, and in addition to that, like I said, about three point six million different businesses that are available at any given time that fit our criteria of the kinds of businesses we want to buy. Yeah. Love it. All right, Roland, I, in the interest of time here and respecting your time, first of all, thank you for being my guest. And you just- Thank you for having me, Joe. Went through so much stuff in such a short mer uh, period of time that I think should open up people's eyes and ears to what's possible. And I would encourage anyone listening to seize the day. Go to epicwithroland.com. Yes, that's my affiliate link. I have no problem saying I've partnered with Roland to be able to help promote this, but it's because I went through it myself. I'm in the process of doing the stuff that he teaches in that program. And now I'm, I got my wife on board to go through it with me so we can do this stuff together because it's a lot more fun doing it with a partner. It is. It and is. And, uh, and I'm real excited for your upcoming, your, your latest challenge. And I'm going to be there right with everyone. Awesome. So I, I hope to see you there. there. Roland, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Appreciate and, you. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, talk again later. All right, everyone, go out there. This Roland is not average. This is your opportunity to not be average as well. Uh, let's make it happen. I'll see you on the Epic Challenge. Tune in next week for the Not Your Average Joe Show with international business mentor Joe Soto. 